Warner Brothers was hiring office boys, and I got a job there. That was 1939. And this was in New York? Manhattan, right. Now, what did you do at Warner Brothers? Kind of do this Everything. Thing. First, I just started out delivering stuff, taking the subway with spot news, we'd call it, for the different drama movie editors. Then um, I got into the press book department, which was writing, which was good. There was a press book put out on every big picture, and some not so big, some B pictures as well. What exactly is a press book? Press book is a very glossy, rather large press book that gives stories and interesting things about the picture. It includes a serialization of the movie. It, um, typical ads, how to sell a picture. It's an, uh, an adjunct to your work. It's an aid for the exhibitor. Did Warner Brothers have a very specific way of putting these together? Were they strict they all had the things? same idea. They all did it pretty much the same. Can you describe the department a little bit, the publicity department of Warner Brothers? A lot of young people in a terrible old drafty building wearing, well, neckties at those days. We had to, but kind of a messy old city desk type of operation. About 15 people in one room. Who ran the department? A man named Leon J. Blumberg, who interestingly enough was a semi-illiterate. <laughs> there was a movie called The Constant Nymph. And he said to me, what's a nymph? Nymph. And I said, an illiterate elf. Seemed to satisfy him. What was his management style? His management style? Well, he'd have assignments and you'd write them and he'd look them over and change them. Now, what other, what, at the time, what films were being, were you working on? Oh, well, I mentioned The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex. Paul, the Paul Muni films, We Are Not Alone, it was called. The gangster pictures of the 30s and 40s. Did your very good films. Warner's had a very unique style, more so than most studios, except with the exception of MGM. Can you describe that style? Well, Warner's was kind of a daring do, gangster, mobster kind of thing. A lot of energy. Jimmy Cagney, Edward G. Robinson, those were the stars. Some of them. A lot of daring do, a lot of picaresque pictures, like the Errol Flynn films, which were very successful. <clears throat> now, was the New York office in a lot of communication with the, the Hollywood office? Constant. Now, were the duties divvied up in any way between New York and Hollywood? Well, yes. They had to have a home office, which was at 321 West 44th Street. And of course, there was the West Coast that fed everything. The creative was on the West Coast. The creativity, pardon me.